your charts here. Um, what have you picked up here? What, what does it show? Well, when an earthquake happens, it sets off seismic waves in, in, in the earth. Now, in for seismometers in Japan, they will have arrived within a few seconds at the closest points. Uh, but to travel from Japan to here takes something like 10, 12 minutes. And so what we see here is the recordings of seismometers in Edinburgh, where the waves have arrived 10 or 12 minutes later. And so we, we, we pick that up very clearly here. Uh, anything in particular you can pick out on the chart that shows the the, the, the strength of this? Well, to, to get the magnitude of an earthquake we'd always use the seismometers that are really close to the event uh, because they will experience most of the they'll see most of the ground motion there so we're a very long way away from that so we would we, we will also bring into Edinburgh data from seismometers around the world, but this is from our own recordings actually in Edinburgh. So a relatively weak signal, but still very, very detectable. And so I suppose in the, the, the most layman's of layman's terms, what you're looking at is when there's suddenly a lot of movement in the, the lines yes, there. Yes, I mean, the, 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 the lines are showing ground motion. So most of the time, not much is happening, but then the waves arrive and the ground is moving up and down and the seismometers are capturing that movement of the ground as the waves arrive from that distant earthquake. And then as the waves have passed, things settle down again and it becomes quiet. So I suppose something like what we can see to the, the right of the, the chart there, that's illustrating at that point quite a lot of movement. It, it is, and, and sometimes even for really huge earthquakes like this, sometimes you can see them go around the world more than once. And that was something that we, we saw in the case of Indonesia in uh, Boxing Day 2004. Okay.